Hey everyone, in this lecture we're going to talk about how to grade tests. If you've ever heard the term curving, you're going to get a full understanding of what that means in this lecture. So let's get started. Alright, so many, many teachers face this problem right here. Suppose your class failed a test with an average of 36% and a standard deviation of 12%. What would be a score of passing? I mean, you can't fail your entire class, and so how would you determine what a passing grade is? This is actually a really hard question to answer, so we're actually going to go over to the computer and work through this example together, so I'll see you there. All right, so we're trying to figure out how to grade a test, right? And this is a very common problem that instructors and professors face. This to me would be the ideal way of grading a test. So we have typically five letter grades. We have our A's, our B's, our C's, our D's, and our F's. Now, when you're grading on a bell curve, this is probably the best way of grading because tests tend to be dist normally distributed slightly. So you're going to have an average. Let's say you have a really bad test and it's like a, the average was like a 34%. And the standard deviation, let's say, is pretty small, like 11%. So that would mean a couple different things. First off, that would mean this middle right here is a 34%. And you would technically label that as a C most of the time. But you actually get to define what, what your regions are. In this instance, I'm actually giving 20% um, to each category. That's why all of these sex, uh, segments, these sections, are exactly the same size. Now you can section off your grades however you want. You can maybe make your A's a little bit bigger, your B's a little bit bigger, maybe your C's keep the same size and shrink your D's and shrink your F's. You can do this however you want, but I, for the sake of this uh, example, I'm going to assume that every uh, there's going to be 20% of the people getting A's, 20% getting B's, 20% getting C's, 20% D's, and 20% F's. So grades are pretty much evenly distributed. Now the question is, what is an A? What is a B? What is a C? What is a D? And what is an F? If these are my test statistics. And that's actually not too bad of a problem to find out. In particular, we would want, like if we were trying to figure out what these numbers are, because this is kind of what's the, the important part here. Let me use a different color. Let me use a different color than that, like blue. We're trying to figure out what are these cutoffs right here. Because if we can figure out those cutoffs, then we can immediately have all of our segments for our, um, our gr letter grades. Now to figure out what those segments are, if you think about it, like let's take this segment for example, this one right here. This segment has an area to the left, or should have an area to the left, of 20% plus 20% plus 20%. The idea is 60% of the people should have a grade lower than this cutoff mark. So I'm going to call this cutoff mark X. And I know that this area right here is 60% because it's 20% of my class plus another 20% of my class plus another 20% of my class. So 60% of the people should do worse than whatever this letter grade X is. So let's figure out what X is. Now, um, we technically don't know anything about this bell curve, but we can work with the Z-score bell curve. Now, um, let's imagine this as my Z-score bell curve. I'm gonna draw a mini Z-score bell curve over here. And it has an uh, average of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, I'm trying to find a z-score with an area to the left of 0.6. Well, I know how to do that. I can find on my z-table which region has an area to the left of 0.6. So we're going to find that real quick. We are looking for an area to the left of 0.6. Now, this is actually relatively important because we haven't discussed this yet. Oops, I pulled up the wrong screen. I'm supposed to put up, pull up my annotation screen. There we go. Now, where is 0.6 in my area section? Keep in mind, I, I know the area to the left is 0.6. So where are my, where is 0.6 here? 
Well, it looks like it's somewhere between these two things right here. Now it looks like it's more, it's closer to this value right here. That looks to be more like 0.6. But sometimes maybe people will take both answers and they'll just take the average z-score there. But I'm just going to take this one for now, which is 0.25. So that z-score is 0.25. So this z-score right here is 0.25. And now... Now that we know what the z-score is, we can find the corresponding grade, le uh, grade for that z-score. And the way we do that is through the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma. In this case, my z is 0.25 equals x minus my average is 34 on the test. And my standard deviation for the test was 11. So in this case, x is, let me grab my calculator real quick. 0.25 times 11 plus 34, which is 36.75. So that means this, this cutoff right here would be 36.75. So if you got a grade that's greater than 36.75 on the test, that would be considered either a B or an A. Now, if we wanted to figure out which one that was, we'd have to find this cutoff right here. And to find that cutoff, we need to do the same process over and over again. But this to me is how grades should be done. The idea is you figure out what proportion of your class needs to be in which grade, uh, grade here, and then you grade on this curve. Now this is what teachers should mean when they say grading on a curve. Unfortunately, when, you, when a teacher says, I'm gonna curve the test, Nowadays, that just means I'm gonna give like an extra 10% to everyone. I'm gonna add everyone's uh, test score by 15%. But that's actually not what you should be doing. In this case, we should just figure out what the cutoff marks are and then assign grades based off of that. So um, to me, this is the best way of grading. Technically, it's not completely normally distributed, but most of the time we can consider a, a grade for a test, um, test scores in general as normally distributed and you can do this math. Anyways, I hope this helps teachers out there or um, anyone that's deciding, you know, what, what should be an A, what should be a B, what should be a C, what should be a D, what should be an F, and so on. I do want to share a quick story before I end this lecture though. I actually, this is actually a true story. I did have a teacher give these statistics for my class, which was uh, an average of 34 and a standard deviation of 11, somewhere around there. And he ended up giving me an A because my test was somewhere around like a 45%, which was pretty terrible. It would be considered an F in typical um, K through 12 education, but he gave me an A because compared to the class, that was a relatively good score. So I like writing on a, belt, on a curve because it's, to me, totally fair. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture. <laughs>